everyone. Thanks for joining us for this episode of the Dubert webinar series. So today we're going to be looking at the email communication feature in CCM, which is really exciting because if you're big on communication, you have the option to either text or email. So we also have a webinar on the texting features as well. So I just thought it was a good idea to break them up and really specialize within texting versus email. So these will kind of go hand in hand. Um, so definitely check out the texting webinar as well. But let's get into our emailing webinar. So if you're new to our webinar series, typically how they work is we will go through the slide deck really quickly and kind of just walk through some of the processes and give a little bit of background knowledge on some of the functionality, things like that. And then we're going to jump into the system and demo everything we just talked about. So I am going to be demoing in our beta environment. So it's kind of for testing. It's like a sandbox. Um, so if things might look a little off or we run into any bugs, I'll definitely let you guys know, but hopefully we don't. And after that, we're going to have just a brief little Q&A at the end where we go through some of our Q&As or FAQs, things that we've been asked on demos or to our help email, all things like that. So let's check out our first slide. So the great thing about email communication within Dubert is that you can email directly from your case. So whether that case be for a pet food pantry, you're sending them a pickup email, just letting them know like, hey, you're approved, come pick up your pet food. Or you could have, for example, um, a foster volunteer program, send them emails, just kind of staying in touch with their fosters or any of their preferences if they don't currently have any fosters. So really a lot of options of what you can really do with the emails. And the great thing about the emails is that you can also send surveys to an email as well. So that's a little bit different from our texting feature. So with texting, we can't send surveys to a phone number, but we can only send them to the email address. So if you're looking to send any surveys or forms that we build for you, those will have to go to the email. So I just wanted to point that out while we're on this slide. And then you can view your conversation log for information on, for example, your timestamps, your dates, and when the messages were sent and received within your case conversation log under our communication tab. So we'll check that out as well. And then the great thing about the emails, again, is that you have the option to attach any files to your messages. So just like texting, you can also create email templates. So they work really similar, but you don't have that uh, character count that is pretty low with the texting on the emails. So that's a really great option for some of your longer messages. And then another great thing for email is if you're sending someone any quick links or anything of resource, anything like that, that's going to be a little bit longer. It's always good to put it in an email so they can keep it for safekeeping. So we can speed up your processes by sending emails within seconds. So you can attach files, like I said, forms, surveys, and resources for your community. And another great option is to add any Calendly links to your email templates if you are looking to do any scheduling. So that's a really great option if you're looking to streamline some of your communications. And then you can create templates for each of your programs just as an idea to send out surveys to gather more pet information, gather photos of the pets, or send out your scheduling information, for example. So the great thing about these templates is that you can embed a survey link within your email template to send them a little message along with a survey template if they are interested in filling that out. That will put more information into your case once that form is filled out. So for more information on that, definitely check out our surveys webinar to see how that would work. But if you've already seen that, you'll kind of have a little bit of an idea of how that all works. And then things you should know about our email communication feature is that the red dots will indicate an invalid email or phone number on our all cases page. And then the blue ones mean that there is one that is awaiting our team's review. So the red dots will always be above our blue dots just to keep that in mind. Um, and then the great thing about the email feature is that you can view your entire conversation log in the communication tab of the case. And then you can view any of your files that you received through the um, files tab. And then emails can only be received when the sender's email matches the case contact of an existing case within your account. So definitely keep that in mind if you're looking to send emails. 
So now we're going to check out our address book and this goes kind of hand in hand with the texting feature as well. So you can store all of your contacts within this address book. So for example, we have the ability to see our contacts right here. We have our phone number and we also have our email. So this is a way that we can go and edit that email or phone number if we want to do so and or we can red edit it through the case. But just to access that, it's up on the top little bar right here and you would just click on this little address book. But other than that, now we're going to jump into the system and talk about all of this. So I'm gonna head over to our companion case management tab right here, and we're gonna go down to a template. And typically the first step in sending out an email would be creating your template if you are looking to streamline any of your processes. So that's why I highly recommend the templates is because it takes a lot of that customization out of your processes. So it's great for saving your time. So as we can see, this is our templates page and you can see right here our types of templates that we have currently existing, the names, uh, the date that they were last updated and we can delete them or search for them as well. So we're gonna go ahead and click on this plus sign and create our first email template together. So we're gonna click on email and we're gonna name this. This is internal, it's just for your organization to find that template. So we're gonna call this Lena's email webinar template. And now we're gonna put in our subject line. So for example, we're going to um, base this around a rehoming or owner surrender type program. So we're going to say, thanks for applying. Whoops. One thing you'll notice about these webinars is that I have a lot of typing errors, but bear with me. So we're gonna go ahead and put our context into the text box right here. And then we do have a couple um, formatting options here as well, if you're interested in using some of those. So we're gonna go ahead and say, hey there. Thanks for applying for cause for Pause rehoming. We will be reviewing your application shortly. Please reply with any questions. Okay, so short and sweet. We don't have a character limit, which is great for the emails. And if we want to attach any files right here, for example, say we have any. Um, resource pages, articles, things that our organization likes to share when we send out any of our initial rehoming emails, we can definitely add those on right here. But for now, this looks good to me. So I'm going to go ahead and click on save right here. All right, so once we save our template, we end up back on our Manage Templates page. So and now we're gonna scroll down and check out our newly created email template. So right here, we have Lana's email webinar template and it's an email as well as our date that we created it. So that all looks good. So now we're gonna head over to our case and put it to work. So we're gonna jump into our cases tab right here. And once we get onto our cases tab, I am going to search for the case that I'm looking for. And I'm gonna use the assign to feature because that is one of my favorites for optimal searching. All right, so now we're gonna to go to our assigned and I'm going to find myself right here and click on search. And now we can see that we have a rehoming case right here. So we're gonna click on that one. And we're going to end our current workflow, which is because we're going to send out a new communication. So you don't have to do this if your workflow is already existing, but I'm going to just for the sake of demo purposes. So I'm going to end this one so we can start fresh. So I'm going to head over into our communications tab right here, and we're going to stay on the email tab. And if we want to customize an email, we can go ahead and just start filling in our subject line or our body of the text and then we can't put any formatting in things like that but we're going for a time-saving approach so we're gonna go ahead and click insert template right here and we're gonna go ahead and click on Lana's email webinar template so now we can see that our template is just popped into our text boxes and it looks great 
I don't want to customize anything, but if you want to, you can. So for example, if you want to change the hey there to the contact's name or anything like that that's a little bit more tailored to the contact, you can definitely do that. But I think this looks great as it is, so I'm going to go ahead and click send. All right, so once we sent our message, now we're gonna check out our conversation log right here. So we can see that we have all of our communication history with this phone number and email included, and we're gonna see that our newest communication was just sent. So that's really great, just letting you know which one of your team members had sent that as well. So definitely keep that in mind. That's great for team collaboration and things like that. But that is all we have for our email section of the conversation log. So now we're going to check out our files. So for example, if someone sends us any files through text or email, any sort of communication, they are gonna fall into the file section right here if we want to open them. So definitely keep that in mind if you choose to re request any files through any of the communication features for your cases. So now we're going to jump up into our address book and start checking that out. All right, so I am in our address book right now, and since I'm in our beta environment and we typically test in here, I have one search, so I don't accidentally give out any of my team members' phone numbers. <laughs> so right here, we just have a dubert.com one that's an example, and as you can see right here, we have our email addresses. So if we ever want to edit an email address, we can head up to our address book and click on this little pencil right here once we find the contact that we're looking for, and we can just go ahead and edit our email. So I'm just going to edit that to Lana at duber.com and click save and it looks good. So once we save our changes, now we can go ahead and see that it has been updated here as well. So that's a great way to keep all of your contacts updated quickly. So that is all I have for our demo session. So now we're going to jump back into our slides and check out our Q&A. Okay, so our first question is, can I receive an email? if I don't have that email in an existing case? So great question. As an organization, this can be a little bit tricky to understand, but just kind of giving you a crash course in how the system works with the emails, if there is not an existing case with that email address included, then that email won't go through to your organization. So in order to keep that email going through from the recipient to the organization or um, vice versa, you want to keep that email address updated within your case and keep it open or active, um, whatever you choose to do. But if you don't have that existing case and someone is trying to email you from your Dubert CCM email, which is typically a short little abbreviation abbreviation of your organization's name, and then um, just like a little Dubert email after it. So if someone's trying to reach out to that email and they don't have an existing case, that email will bounce. And sometimes we receive them as um, the Dubert team. So if we get any that is your organization's, we always forward them onto you. Um, but other than that, it is important to always have a case open if someone is going to be going back and forth communicating with your organization by email. So definitely keep that in mind. And then our next question is, will it stop me if there is an invalid email address? So another great question. And what this will do is it'll attempt to send the email and then it will realize that it can't, that it's a um, invalid email address. And then that's where that red dot is gonna come into play within your cases list. So if we jump into the system and check this out, I'm gonna clear out my filter right here. And as you can see, our red dots up here, these are all invalid email or phone numbers. So if you have a bad email, it's trying to send something, it will be sure to let you know. And then you can just go back in here and update that and try again. So that is all I have for today's webinar. So thank you guys so much for joining us and I hope to see you in future webinars.